Hey, bonjour, it's Al from Al's Rolling Nuthouse. Hey, just checking in for a quick update. I, um, um, uh, taking a break from bookkeeping and business and all kinds of things. It's amazing how you got a, I don't know, so many chores and, um, repairs to make in your house and business and all that. So anyway, I'm, I feel like I'm going out of my priorities to tinker with the bus, but it's driving me crazy not being able to start this thing. So, um, I did come across some documentation, but it doesn't do anything. They gave me this with the bus. I found it in the bus, and uh, it shows all the accessories and, you know, warranties and that sort of things. Things that don't even exist anymore, you know, leveling system and that sort. But um, I also kind of trying with the little boroscope uh, camera thing because one of the things that um, intrigue me is uh, when I turn the key uh, you'll hear a big click and that big click is a relay or a uh, contactor and so what in my little brain in diagnosing things um, you're when you turn the key multiple electrical things have to turn on. So you're using a, a contactor or a relay with multiple poles, I call it. So, you know, accessory or power to uh, the driveline retarder, you know, ignition, um, different functions, I guess you call it. So I was poking around with the camera under the dashboard to see if I can see anything. And obviously it's kind of awkward for, I'm not that agile, so I might unbolt the seat and then I can lay down and get under there or something. I don't know. I'll figure out some better access. But I wanted to just show you underneath and um, what I found uh, is kind of cool so far is uh, I haven't really gotten a chance to start working on stuff um, as seriously as I wanted to. But I just wanted to kind of just show in case somebody else is embarking on this. So uh, I got two batteries and they're wired in parallel. So it's still 12 volts. And um, um, connections. And it's amazing for such a huge size cable it is. And this one, the positive as well, goes down to um, the starter motor. And this negative wire goes down to the frame. And uh, there's a lug and it gets attached to the frame. And then on the other side of the frame rail, it continues in this. And it kind of goes down by the starter. Let me see if I can show you down by the starter here. Pardon me for a sec. Not as agile as I used to be. Let's see if I can this light work. I guess a little more light on the subject. Oopie doopie. Look at that. So, I followed the electrical down to here. And I forgot to see my air tanks. Woohoo! New air tanks and all that. Uh, but it's interesting, it all comes together at the start here, and I'm going to, as I get progress on this, I'm going to take things, uh, clean all these contacts, take them apart and clean them, and you look up here, this was a cover, this is on the side of the engine, a plastic cover that goes over these two big fuses, these, this one's 125 and that one is 125 also, and those would be like, I'll call them branch circuits that, you know, the instrumentation, ignition, all that kind of stuff would, it would feed another fuse block, perhaps. And they just stole it off of the constant power coming to the starter. And uh, there's the big negative wire going to the negative there, which is good because this must draw a huge amount of current. And it's interesting with electrical stuff is like you see it and you put a meter on it, it says 12 volts, but when you put a, a lot of current, like a starter motor, which might be a thousand amps, you know, cranking or whatever, um, if it doesn't have good continuity, that sucker will actually heat up. And that's another thing that concerns me. If any, you know, like I do electrical, um, how do you call it, you know, residential building commercial with, you know, AC power and buildings and stuff. So, like, you know, if you've got any corrosion going on, eventually there's enough resistance, it'll heat up and start a fire. They do, I don't know about automotive, but these are on blocks that can take some temperature, but you don't want to, God forbid, you don't want to have a fire. So it, you know, be good to, you know, um, 
take it apart, clean it up, and then any antioxidant you could use to keep it from corroding. And I'll have to see if I can find another cover for this side. On my step van, same thing. It's uh, it's a Freightliner. I think they do this pretty much with, I don't know, I'll have to check in some big truck shop or something. It seems like all the electrical distribution seems to be like, you know, along the frame rails. And it's also very vulnerable. In Connecticut here, we have a lot of... Uh, road salt, calcium chloride, whatever it is they spray on before the storm and then, uh, you know, during the storm and stuff. So it, it, it's so corrosive and um, anything we can do to prevent that. And I wish like I could come up with a, you know, high temperature flame retardant Tupperware that you could put over it. But, you know, everything's got to be, you know, be able to withstand some pretty high temperatures as well. So anyway, those are the two fuses that I wanted to show and these connections here, frame the connection to the frame rails back on the other side of the axle. But um, also there's a mess of relays that are just, uh, well, looks like one of them has been taped up and that looks suspect. And then I gotta check these relays here and see if, um, uh, if they're using this frame for the ground or what. Because if they are, it's probably part of the problem. Anyway, preventatively we will be doing something with that and um, you know when a van or whatever your vehicle just sits on the I got mine parked on the uh, you know pebbles here it's not on asphalt or cement so there's evaporation that it constantly occurs from the ground and it condenses under your frame and you know helps rust things so it'd be nice to have a vapor barrier there and uh, or be driving the thing all the time but uh, whatever uh, and, and it's, it, it would be great to have a, a nice, uh, what do you call it, weatherproof undercarriage to a vehicle if, if there's such a thing. Mercedes does pretty good, like with a Sprinter van and the Mercedes cars have always been really good. They've lasted, you know, like 20 years before it starts to, um, you know, anything starts to peel off. But uh, in the Sprinter van, because it's, uh, what do you call it, a unibody, and it's rolled uh, like tubular almost inside for the frame rail and it's very light gauge metal it concerns me because if any of that road salt gets into the holes into that cargation then it's gonna internally rust and you won't even see it and that scares me a little bit so that's why I chose from there after after owning two sprinter vans I think I like having a frame I can see what's going on it's great gas mileage on sprinter van but the money you save on fuel you spend on repairs I guess so it's a 50-50 but it's a nice vehicle no doubt I, I'm going to enjoy with the one that I got until it till it's done I guess but um, so that's that's what I'm looking at and I'm going to I'm not going to video trying to do this because I'm going to have to disconnect battery and you know get my little uh, grinder out and stuff and sandpaper and files and stuff but um, but that's definitely uh, something to look at. So um, with that, I'll, uh, I'll say goodbye. So have a great day. God bless. And uh, I'll be keeping you updated on troubleshooting because I'm bound to find something here. It's got to be some stupid, simple electrical thing. Batteries are good shape, everything like that. So we keep, keep looking. And in the middle of the night, I wake up and thinking, oh, yeah, I should check this or check that. But um, I guess that's what keeps life interesting. So thankfully, I don't have to rely on this for, um, you know, getting to work or I'm not living in it. So I guess I'm thankful for that, that uh, I have a little time to, uh, you know, juggle with this. So, well, you guys take care. God bless. And uh, thanks for checking this out and uh, enjoy your day. See you. Bye.